Hi, I'm Carrie Nelson. I work at Moda Fabrics and I'm here at the Fat Quarter Shop Studios today and I'm going to share some of my favorite notions. I don't think there's a quilter alive who doesn't like tools and gadgets and we all have our favorite stuff. Um, I'm going to start over here. These are the new cake mix recipes, which are of course my favorite way to make half triangle squares. Uh, I really have been having a lot of fun playing with these. And while there are four recipes now, there are more to come because yes, I'm having that much fun. Uh, I do use alphabetties. I love them because I tend to lay things out. I have a design floor, not a design wall. And when I'm taking things back and forth, I get them out of order. So the alphabetties are great, but I was having a hard time figuring out how to get them to stay on the fabric. So I used some of my favorite little pins. They're called bulb pins because they're shaped like a light bulb. I used an awl to poke a hole up in one of the corners of the alphabet. And so I made it into a little dangle. Yes, you could make earrings, but I don't know. I guess you could do that depending on what letters you wanted to wear. Um, so I use alphabeties. I also love tins. I do use, uh, or a lot of times I have a scented candle when I'm sewing. Uh, it just adds to the relaxation and ambiance of it all. I do recommend that you not have it on your sewing table anywhere near where you're sewing. Otherwise, you might accidentally set a quilt on fire. I didn't actually set it on fire, but it came close. So keep it separate. I like to prep my fabrics using sizing or starch. I tend to use sizing more often because it gives it a nice body, but it doesn't make it too, too stiff unless I really, really saturate it, which sometimes I do. But I like it because it makes it, it gives me a little bit better pressing and cutting. I don't use a regular thimble, I just never got used to it, but I do like the little leather thimble pads that you can stick to your finger. They just work for me and it keeps me from turning my finger into hamburger. I am of an age where I need a needle threader. Uh, this is one of my favorites. It's got two different ends, one of which is a little finer, which is great for the number nine and 10 straw needles that I use. These are my favorite sewing needles, whether I'm doing binding or any kind of hand stitching. I just like the straws because they're a little longer and they're a little bit easier for me to handle. Seam rippers. Um, of course, I never use one. Um, I buy these by the box. They are my favorites. Same thing. I like the way it feels in my hand because yes, I do use a seam ripper fairly often. And I find that the little cutter inside the blade tends to be quite sharp and it makes it really easy to quickly unstitch seams. My favorite pins are by Little House. Uh, I've used these pins for probably 10 years. They are very, very sharp, very, very fine, and they have glass heads so you can actually iron them if you act, forget that you've got it in there. I put them in fun little tins for traveling, but I use the pins all the time. When I'm home stitching, I like magnetic pin bowls, and the polka dot ones are my favorites. Uh, I just like that I can kind of throw a pin in the general direction. It's also great that if you drop something on the floor, you can just use that to pick it up. Um, at the top, you'll see, yes, I do like to quilt with chocolate. Uh, I, if I'm gonna have it around, I probably have Harry and David, uh, especially at the holidays. It is my favorite. Washi tape. I use it all the time for putting marks on my rulers if I'm gonna be doing a lot of cutting at a consistent size, especially if it's an eight size, which we'll get to in a minute with my favorite rulers. So washi tape is the best. It sticks nicely, you can see it easily, and oh yeah, by the way, it's really cute. It also doesn't leave any residue. Little scissors, I have them all over the sewing room. I always have sheets on them because they can get dropped, they can get dull, they can get knocked into, and if they're really good scissors, they're also nice and sharp, and you can poke yourself. My favorite thread, 
Aurifil 50 weight, 23.24. I buy it by the cone. Uh, it's what I use for almost all my piecing, and I use it for binding and a lot of stitching, and even a lot of machine quilting because it's a beautiful neutral thread that blends in beautifully with a lot of things. I love vintage spools of any kind. They're great for storing ribbon, trims, long lengths of binding, anything that will keep something organized until you need to be able to use it. Yes, that is my phone. I listen to audiobooks. Uh, I do some podcasts and things like that, but audiobooks tends to be my favorite. Uh, Audible.com and your local library. Get a library card and most libraries have a really good lending library. You might have to wait a little bit, but if you listen to a lot of books, you'll save a lot of money. Uh, it's a great way to do it. I'm actually going to move my phone aside so that I can show you some of my favorite rulers. I love the Itty Bitty Rulers by Lisa Bonjean of Primitive Gatherings and Creative Grits. They have eighth of an inch markings. The lines are very thin. They're easy to follow and they come in great sizes for small pieces. I have and use all of them. I also love block lock rulers. As you can see, I have a rather large assortment. If Block Lock makes a ruler for something I want to be able to do, I'm probably going to get their ruler. Uh, I do use the half triangle square rulers, but the flying geese, I don't make flying geese without them. They just are consistently the best. I know some people, it bothers them that you might be wasting fabric. Many years ago, thought about it and realized if I was making a quilt and I could have saved even a half or even maybe generously a yard of fabric by using the old fashioned no waste methods, it was worth it to me to spend $10, $12 to get something that was perfect. And with any kind of trim down ruler, it's perfect. So it's worth it to me. The last thing is this light. Uh, you need good light for sewing. This one, what I love is the light bar itself is quite long, so you can have it illuminating a fairly nice size area. It is also, because it's quite thin, you can have it positioned in front of your sewing machine, just a little bit above it, and it's not in your way when you're looking. It's very, what's the term they use, low profile. So you can be sewing in this beautifully illuminated area. It is also movable, so you can adjust it up or down as need be, depending on what you're stitching. So those are my favorite for lights. And let's see, is there anything I missed? I don't think so. So it means I think I'm done and I can have a piece of chocolate.